Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to this webinar. Um, today we will be uh, concentrating our uh, webinar on the generator analysis, which is now being introduced in uh, Morsol version 6.0. Um, the, uh, the way that th this will proceed is we'll be start by talking about um, uh, uh, an introduction between motor and jet versus generator analysis and why we've introduced generator analysis, uh, followed by um, going through the motor solve uh, interface to show you a little bit of how to enter the geometry and so on. And finally, we'll go directly into generator analysis uh, in motor solve. Uh, we'll concentrate on two parts. There's going to be two types of analysis. There's the performance charts which are going to be um, standard uh, performance uh, charts, and followed by analysis charts, which is a, a, a sort of an experimental uh, tool that you can use to uh, analyze your generator. And finally, we'll go through an example of a high-speed generator, um, and we'll go through that very, very quickly. So motors and generators are typically uh, considered to be the same type of machine. They, they, basically, a motor can be used as a generator as well. If you turn if you turn it upside down, in other words, you feed in uh, power into the shaft, and then you output the um, use the uh, the voltage output to, to uh, generate uh, power. Um, so they have common design principles for both motors and generators, and these deal mostly with the geometry and and also for the uh, windings and so on. But the outputs for motors and generators are very different. And a motor outputs the, uh, its power to the shaft, while the generator takes its power from the shaft. And of course, there's going to be different types of loads. The load is going to be an electrical load in terms of a generator, while it's going to be a mechanical load in terms of a motor. Uh, so for optimal generator design, uh, we won't be using the same tools as uh, for uh, optimal motor design. And uh, most of the software tools that you have out there today uh, will uh, use the fact that, that motors can act as generators, and so they will only address the motor aspects of the design and have very little to do with the generator design. So that brings us to the point where we need a specialized ge generator design tool, and that's what we're going to present to you with uh, MotorSolve. So, what are some of the configurations and loads that we see with the generators? Well, there's uh, different. There's about six or seven different types of loads that you'll find in the uh, for a generator. Um, there's the simple ones like the no load or open circuit. This is, of course, is going to be used mostly in uh, for testing purposes, and as well as a short circuit. So those are the two basic loads, and uh, they they can characterize the generator. Um, the uh, third type of load, which is a passive impedance load. Now, these can be purely resistive, or they can also be a uh, combination of resistive inductive loads or even resistive capacitive loads. Uh, and, of course, generators are also connected. Uh, we connect to the, uh, to the grid today. Of course, that's the, same, the equivalent of the infinite bus, uh, where you're connecting a generator to a system which is very rigid. And, of course, the, there the generator has to be able to respect what the um, the grid gives you uh, because it's not going to be able to change anything. Uh, another very common load is the diode rectifier load. This is the uh, load where you have uh, basically a generator attached to a battery charger or some kind of DC um, uh, load. And uh, we'll actually be looking at all these as well uh, as the, the, in the last two, the phase control rectifier and the active rectifier loads uh, won't be dealt with uh, um, in, in motor solve at this point. The active rectifier in, in, is basically what you would find in a, um, in a hybrid vehicle. So um, this type of uh, rectifier is, can actually be addressed under motor um, analysis as well. So that we can do a certain amount of uh, analysis there. OK, so we'll look at the first five loads. and. Uh, So the first part will be to, uh, for generator design, what we do, what we'll use is motor solve. And the process is uh, to start with the uh, common motor generator uh, procedures to design uh, the uh, geometry, the winding, and so on. Uh, 
And the first thing that's going to be very important for generated analysis is going to be open circuit characteristics, so the first type of load, which is open circuit load. And of course, that that's going to tell us if the, our generator can provide us with the proper voltage and current that we need um, for operation. Uh, and so we'll then, from the, the design, we'll be able to um, do a generator analysis, uh, so that analyze the generator characteristics of the uh, of the design of the machine, uh, and then from that, based on that information, we can then make modify the generator um, design, either the the winding or the the um, or the geometry, to um, to get a better result. So here is the uh, motor solver interface. Um, the basic parts of it are there's three windows. There's the input side, which is on the uh, uh, right side of your screen, and on the right, on the left side of the screen is your basic uh, navigation window, allowing you to uh, select which parts to work with. And of course, the central view is a view of the machine. So at this at the initial stage, so when you start up MotorSolve, you'll have the uh, the, the um, geometry available to you, and uh, so the choices that you want to make at that at the first stage will be to uh, choose the outer diameter. This is usually based on the specification, of course. Um, you have so much space to put your generator, and of course, you might want to use all of it. Um, so that that's going to be information that you already know. The inner diameter also may be. Based on a specification, uh, it could be for, for example, a shaft diameter or something. Where you'll have a little bit more freedom will be the number of rotor poles, number of stator slots, the rotor topology, uh, and the stator slot shape. So here is the uh, uh, so the, this would be the, our design page or our, our navigation window. And as you can see, under this was under general settings. If we look now under the rotor settings, what can we do? We can start by changing, selecting the type of rotor. Um, here in MotorSolve, this is a template base, so we simply just choose the rotor type from a list of, of templates. And as you can see, it's actually giving you a graphical window of that operation. And uh, then we can set the parameters for the various um, geometry um, entities. For example, here I've shown uh, how you can set the outer diameter. So it's, uh, all the, the all the different parameters for the rotor are available in the input panel. You simply select them and and uh, make the changes to the the the, um, the geometry that you want. So here's an example for the uh, for the rotor for the stator. Sorry. And as you can see, as I zoomed in here, uh, I can change the shape of the stator here simply by changing the inputs uh, of the of the stator. Here in the example, I've got highlighted the winding information, and uh, you can set the winding configuration to be, um, uh, you know, Y or delta connected. Uh, so on, so you, you have a lot of flexibility in how you actually set up the the winding. Um, you can choose also the the wire method. You can choose initially. You might want to choose something like a, a, the wire fill factor as as a choice, but then you can also change it later on to to use something like more realistic, like uh, maybe using a WG gauge or something like that. So so. Some of the features that are common to both the motor and generator design uh, is, and one of the new features of uh, MotorSolve 6.0 is the um, winding charts diagram. So you can see um, in the input panels, uh, right here I have an example on the left of the back EMF uh, input panel. But if you choose the chart to display, you can see we also can display other things such as line-to-line -line back EMF, uh, phase back EMF, uh, the harmonics of the back EMF, uh, uh, flux linkage, winding factors. A uh, new feature uh, that this introduces the gorgeous diagram, which allows you to see how well your winding is uh, matches a, an ideal winding. 
We can also see the air gap MMF, and we also can animate this uh, air gap MMF, which is sometimes useful uh, when you, you're wanting to, to look at uh, uh, what happens within your, your design. So here's an, an example of using the gorgeous diagram. As you can see, this is a, a, a full pitch winding, so it's an integral slot winding, a 12 slot motor. And as you can see, you have an ideal um, star um, diagram for the winding. Now, if we go to a um, 15 slot motor, and now you can see that it, the, the, uh, the diagram is no longer perfectly uh, star shaped, it has some uh, some excursions from the straight line uh, along each of the phases. And that the, the previous one was for 91%. Now, and this one here is an 18-slot winding. And this one has a better winding factor. As you can see, it has a factor of 90, 94.5%. And it is closer to an ideal waveform. So the George's Guide diagram is quite useful for seeing how well um, uh, you Getting how well your 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 winding matches the ideal um, three phase uh, star winding or or. All right, so now we go on to uh, generator analysis. The first thing we'll look at is the back EMF waveform. This is the first load type. It's called open circuit, and as you can see, we have the back EMF waveform, and the maximum of that back EMF will determine what the maximum power that we can output and, and also the maximum uh, voltage that we can output from our generator. And here is an example of the short circuit analysis. Um, as you can see here, we have certain quantities that, that are available. For example, um, you have the short circuit current, the advance angle at short circuit, maximum power for this machine, um, load, for maximum power uh, and, and various other quantities as well. They can be useful for um, characterizing your uh, generator. Now, a lot of the uh, loads will be of the type 3 type, which is a passive impedance load. Uh, this can be, uh, as I say, can be either a purely resistive or a, uh, a reactive load. And um, so there will be um, basic performance charts that are available to us in MotorSolve. And so these are going to be the voltage regulation chart, voltage versus current, power versus speed, torque versus load angle, and a phasor diagram. And of course, this also can be used uh, for infinite bus type um, also um, for uh, the infinite bus type analysis. So for the passive low, we basically use the, um, the impedance and power factor to define the load impedance. Um, so here's the diagram showing how that's done. And the first chart that we want to look at will be the voltage regulation. Now, the voltage regulation is used to help control the terminal voltage. Uh, you'll see this used uh, a lot for grid type analysis or, or for attaching to some kind of grid, and you'll, you'll be able to control the, the uh, determine what the controls are for the for the generator in order to hook it up to that that um, the grid. The second type of analysis is the uh, voltage versus current. Uh, now this displays voltage as, as function of current for a given impedance. So the impedance here varies along the, um, uh, the current chart. So we can see several different uh, loads here. And um, we have on, on the left side, we have a purely resistive load. And on the right side, we have a, low, a, a reactive load with a 0.9 power factor. So you can see how uh, those two differ. The same thing is true for the power versus speed load. Um, you can do it either with a purely resistive or a, um, a reactive load. Again, this is useful to display the power as a function of speed and, and the load impedance. So um, along the chart here, we see the um, load impedance varies. 
and we can see how the power uh, uh, varies uh, for that uh, given um, the power. The, the next type of analysis is the torque versus load angle. This is a, a more of a, um, a chart that is useful if you're going to be doing um, looking at uh, um, how your machine works at different um, different torques. So whatever the uh, the prime mover provides, then you want to be able to see what happens at a, at a certain load angle. So you can extract the information of this from this chart and use it elsewhere for analysis um, uh, under uh, different load conditions. For example, this is very useful if you're looking at, if you want to look at the field analysis and have a look at what, how the, the, uh, uh, the field is distributed uh, at a given, uh, for a given load angle. And the, the last chart the uh, performance chart is uh, the phaser diagram. Uh, in fact, you'll see the phaser diagrams are available through various methods, but this is the what the phaser diagrams look at look like. And you can select the uh, the type of phaser because the definitions could be a little bit different. For example, if it's a PM generator, permanent magnet generator, then then the uh, uh, the display can be changed slightly to to show um, how um, the the phasers are, are uh, from are arranged as opposed to in a salient pole generator the you have different components to the phaser diagram and so you can see you can choose that depending on the type of machine that you're working with all right uh, now let's go on to uh, generator analysis charts these are um, uh, these are the experimental mode analysis charts um, as I said before, predefined charts are useful, but sometimes that's not sufficient for uh, your particular application. So you want to be able to do some kind of, uh, of experimenting with the actual generator uh, and, and control of the, uh, of the generator to be able to uh, see how it performs. So the first type of analysis is the operating points analysis. This is the simplest analysis. It basically is a way of getting um, certain quantities such as the short circuit current and maximum power. Um, and this can be done either at a single speed or you can also perform, get charts of each, each of these quantities and see how they, they vary as a function of, of speed, for example. So this could be a very useful uh, tool um, for, for a given generator. The second um, analysis type is uh, generator uh, analysis charts, the uh, um, operating point in, uh, example. Again, you can do single speed results or multiple speed results. And uh, also the next step is the DQ analysis charts. So this is, uh, this is uh, a, a way of getting the information um, using a DQ model of the motor, of the generator itself. So it's based on DQ analysis, uh, and the DQ analysis is, uses uh, field uh, techniques to extract the DQ information. Uh, there are two modes of operation in this um, mode. Uh, there's time average calculations. So you get things such as uh, RMS voltage, RMS current, that kind of thing. Uh, and it also can be dis has a phaser, phaser display. Now, each mode of operation has its own set of quantities can be displayed. Um, so it can be used for both infinite bus and impedance loads. Uh, variables that you have at your, at, uh, your um, to use are the impedance and the power factor. So those are the um, defining what the load impedance is and the speed. Again, the results can be either single value or they can be charts. So here's an example of of the uh, output of DQ analysis. So we have on the, on the left side all of the different uh, time average quantities that you can uh, display. And on the right side, you can see the different phasers, uh, phaser types that you can display. So these are the same as I've shown before for the phasers, except that we also have in addition here, we have the motor uh, phaser diagram, which is a little bit different than a generator phase diagram. So 
So here's an example of an experiment that, that I've run here. Um, I've chosen to view things such as RMS line current voltage and, uh, and use the, vari uh, the load power factor as variable. So I've changed the load power factor to range over from 0.1 to 1 in uh, 0.025 increments. And you can see now that we have all the, the, the quantities selected displayed on the same chart. The next uh, type of a generator analysis is the reduced order model analysis. Um, this is uh, based, so this analysis is based on a reduced order model of the generator. These uh, the, the parameters for the reduced order model are also obtained from field analysis. Um, this is uh, different com uh, compared to what most software out there uses today, which is um, it, most of them are based on magnetic circuit analysis. So these are based on field circuit analysis, so it's going to be more um, accurate, and also it is uh, saturable, so we take uh, saturation into account um, in, in our models. Now there are basically uh, five display modes available. You can display the waveforms. You can do time averaging on the waveforms. You can also um, look at the amplitude and phase uh, of the harmonics of that same waveform. And finally, you can display it as a phasor diagram. And of course, each, each mode has its own set of quantities, which can be displayed. And in the next slide, we show what those uh, different modes are. As you can see, there are quite a few different types of um, selections here, uh, quite complete, including a lot of the loss calculations and so on. So here's an example of a um, reduced order model analysis. Um, here we're looking at RMS line current, output power, and torque as a function of the load power factor. So we're varying the load power factor and having a look at uh, how uh, the output power, torque, and, and, and uh, the RMS line current vary as a function of that uh, that quantity. The last analysis type, uh, one thing I should mention is that these analysis type, I've started from the simplest working up to the most complex analysis. And so the motion analysis is the most complex analysis type that is available in MotorSolve. This is a pure field-based analysis so that they're um, it, it will will calculate all of the physics that are um, working inside of the machine, and uh, things that we can display in this mode are the waveform. We can look at time averaged quantities. We can look at the harmonic analysis of the waveforms, and of course phasor diagrams as well, and uh, the different quantities that you can see for this type of analysis are shown in this slide, um, and you can see the how how Again, we have a lot more loss quantities, which is one of the things that are more, more interesting. Uh, you can see that, that we have actually looked at the losses uh, in terms of coils and, and also for uh, the losses in the iron split off into both the um, hysteresis type and also for the eddy current type of analysis, so that we can actually split those off uh, and look at various, uh, various quantities. Here's an example of a chart that was uh, obtained for um, the motion analysis. Uh, this is a waveform chart. You can see the waveform of the um, current voltage and output power uh, for um, a sample generator. So let's go on to, this, to an example here. And the example that we'll look at here is a um, high-speed generator. It's a very small generator, it's three inches in diameter. It's a four pole, six slot geometry. The magnet is uh, uses uh, an Inconel retaining sleeve and rotates at 150,000 RPM. Um, it's used in a rec for rectified output, so it's connected to a diode bridge uh, and then hooked up to charge up a battery. Uh, the maximum power, rectified power, output power is 750 watts. That's rating for this for this machine. So here is uh, basically a diagram of a circuit diagram of the machine. 
you can see that on the uh, in the red box uh, that's our generator and of course its leads are connected up to the diode uh, bridge and uh, we're going to look at the rectifier output um, at the uh, other side of this uh, this uh, machine. So the first thing we want to do is to see how well that the design performs and see uh, for saturation and so on. So what we this is useful for uh, changing the geometry, for example. So uh, we'll look at flux densities. You'll probably want to design for a specific flux density in the tooth, uh, in our, or uh, perhaps in the rotor iron, uh, and, and so on. So, um, so here we have the uh, um, the flux density. So uh, if we look that through that, we can actually see what the field is at their various points and make decisions on the design based on that. We can also display time average quantities such as losses. Uh, so here is the uh, total loss distribution, so losses from all the different loss mechanisms that are um, can operate within the machine. And uh, so you can see here eddy current losses, uh, you can see um, iron losses, uh, uh, and all other types of losses. So the first First, uh, we, we can also split that off into uh, other field types. For example, here are the hysteresis losses in the steel, and so you can see where most of the losses are generated in the um, in the in the teeth. They're actually generated towards uh, uh, along the corner here. That's where the losses are at maximum. We can also look at the uh, eddy current losses. Now, the magnets are uh, conducting in many cases. So there could be some losses in the magnets as well, but in this case the retaining sleeve is is highly conducting, so it is what is actually seeing more of the uh, the losses, and you can see that uh, by the, the pattern that's in the uh, in the uh, retaining ring. Finally, there are also the uh, winding losses in the uh, uh, for the stator uh, and of course, uh, in this case here, we have uh, we're not looking at AC losses, so you see a uniform distribution of losses in the winding. So, as I said before, the most important quantity that we want from a generator to start off with is we have to know what its back MF is like. And of course, looking at this back MF waveform, it, we may want to have it as much as possible close to a sinusoid, or we might want to look try to, to reduce the ripple in, in the, the, the waveform, of course, so we can view this. Um, here is the uh, back MF waveform for that high-speed generator. It has a 16-volt peak uh, voltage uh, or 32 volts peak line-to-line. -line. This is uh, the characteristics, the operating point results for that same motor, so we can look at it. We can see what the short circuit current is. Uh, the maximum power, so the maximum power is about 850 watts, um, and we can. There are other quantities that we can look at as well, such as the um, the actual power at the leads of the uh, of the generator before the um, before the um, uh, diode bridge. Here's an example of a reduced order model analysis. Um, this is kind of an ex interesting experiment because under reduced order model we can use uh, we can use a diode bridge uh, output and as you can see here what I've done is I've ranged the um, the voltage um, the the the, the, um, uh, the rectified voltage at the outputs of the diode bridge and and looked at what happened in terms of phase and current and phase voltage as well as output power and and current, um, we can use a curse the cursor here to actually view what the, some of the values are. Uh, this actually turns out to be very interesting. This tells us what how what if we put in a, a certain battery, what kind of um, what kind of um, where it would sit on this on this curve. Uh, so without actually having to to select and test on a given. Um, on a given battery set. So I thank you for your attention. 
I hope this um, this webinar was uh, useful to you and is 